I acted like I could make things turn out the way I wanted them. Now, this wasn't conscious thinking, of course, but that's how I was operating. As if I could turn my partners into emotionally available people, or I could turn that boss into somebody who actually followed through on things, or like I could single-handedly change the American education system into one that equitably distributes education and resources to urban school districts, just like in wealthy suburban districts. Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery, where I help people heal their emotional, psychological, and spiritual wounds and make deep, lasting changes in their lives. I'm the founder and CEO of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting, LLC, where I coach people on how to develop healthy boundaries. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-step recovery fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any particular 12-step fellowship. I also don't believe that 12-step recovery is the only way to recover. You might need additional help. My hope is that you'll find my words concretely helpful in improving your life, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 148, How to Stop Being Attached to Outcomes. You don't get to have your curiosity satisfied. Something that's come about as a result of my recovery is that I've really gotten the message that I don't get to get my curiosity satisfied all the time. In talking about other fellows about like, what the hell is this about? How did it come to be that I used to always feel like if I was curious about something, then I deserved to get my curiosity satisfied or I had to have my curiosity satisfied. And now I realize I can just be curious and not have it satisfied. I'm able to not get closure on things. Like I'm able to leave things sort of hanging open and it doesn't flip me out the way it used to. This is particularly true about my former relationships and former partners. I was the kind of person who needed to understand things. I needed them to make sense. And I just don't need that any longer the way I used to. This brings two quotes to mind about understanding. I will put them in the show notes so you don't have to remember them. One of them is, when you understand, things are as they are. When you do not understand, things are as they are. Meaning, the facts don't change with understanding. Now, the other saying contrasts with that, and it's this. There could be something, the knowing of which changes everything. Now, I feel like I have lived in that second quote. So the facts may not change, but our interpretation of what those facts mean could change if we knew some other piece of information. And I always felt like, If I just understood just one other little piece of information, then everything would make sense to me and I could move on. And I think that partly my need, or at least my very strong desire to understand things comes from growing up very confused in my dysfunctional family. There wasn't much direct communication in my family. You might say I had a lack of clarity because my family didn't talk about shit. You were just expected to know things or fucking figure them out. And I think this was because I was always like, what the fuck is going on? What does this mean? Why are we saying we do this in our family when we actually do that? Or why are we saying we don't do this in our family when we actually do? So I think that partly drove my strong desire to understand things. But now I don't need to understand things like I used to. And I've really internalized that I don't get to get my curiosity satisfied all the time. And I believe this has to do with the fact that I am no longer attached to outcomes the way I was before recovery. And that comes from a variety of things, but mostly from my higher power and especially allowing my higher power to be in charge. Before I came into recovery, like many of you, I'm sure, 
I was self-willing my way through life. I acted like I could make things turn out the way I wanted them. Now, this wasn't conscious thinking, of course, but that's how I was operating. As if I could turn my partners into emotionally available people, or I could turn that boss into somebody who actually followed through on things, or like I could single-handedly change the American education system into one that equitably distributes education and resources to urban school districts, just like in wealthy suburban districts. By taking an inventory of my life in recovery, I realized, yeah, that wasn't really working for me. I wasn't making things come out the way I wanted, and attempting to do that was fucking draining me. I was trying to control the uncontrollable, which is everything outside myself, people, places, things, the world. And because I focused all my energy and attention out there, I wasn't focused on me and what was going on internally, that is, on the things that I could control, the things I could change. So that might made my life even more unmanageable. I'm spending all my energy on that which I cannot control and zero of my energy on that which I can. So that's a never-ending drain on energy. Getting used to turning my will and my life over to the care of God and also getting used to asking God to guide my actions, then seeing how much fucking better my life was really got the message across to me. Don't be attached to outcomes. Because when I look at my life from handing things over to God, it is infinitely better than when I'm in church. Because when I'm attached to the outcome, it means I'm using my teeny tiny little barb and angle perspective rather than allowing God to use the perspective of the entire universe and eternity to figure things out. And I think This has to do with why I've internalized that I don't get to have my curiosity satisfied because I know that God is in charge and the universe is for me, not against me. This is also connected to me learning how to mind my own goddamn business. Some of me sticking my nose into other people's business before recovery was about me wanting to get my curiosity satisfied. It was also about me thinking that I knew better than they did about their lives and that they should just do things my way or let me fix or rescue them or their situation. Recovery, especially learning how to have healthy boundaries, taught me to mind my own business. And guess what? It hasn't fucking killed me to mind my own business. And it hasn't killed me to not get my curiosity satisfied. And man, I will take this way of living over feeling like I get to have my curiosity satisfied any day. Just because I was wondering things like, why did you say that to him? What did you say to him? Or why did you go to the hospital? Or what did you ever do about that situation? Or what were you thinking? Now, I still ask people these types of things from time to time. But I reserve those kinds of questions for people that I have more intimate relationships with. And when there is a context for it, and it seems relevant to have that conversation, I just don't need answers for things the way that I used to. I'm focused on me and what's going on in my life. And I'm more satisfied with what is. And I guess it's because I've learned acceptance. Recording this has helped me to see how all of these different things are connected to living out the serenity prayer, accepting things I cannot change, changing the things I can, and especially understanding which is which. All of that allows me to not be attached to the outcome and to mind my own damn business. Now, there are a few other episodes connected to what I've talked about that I will leave links to in the show notes. They might be helpful to you. One is an episode on acceptance. It's episode number two. 
Another one is what I call the Serenity Prayer Reimagined. It's episode 86. And the other one is Focus on What You Can Control. That's episode 53. And again, I will link those in the show notes.